So in this episode, we're going to demonstrate the use of, con of Constructive Dilemma, CD. So we have a little proof here, and we're looking for patterns, and you know, the, the more times you do a proof, the easier it is to recognize the patterns. Uh, but anyway, what, what pattern do you see, Mark? Well, if I was looking at this, I'd see the two horseshoes. The first thing I might think about is hypothetical syllogism. Yeah. But they're not matching up kitty corners. Really not fitting. So the cues don't match. Yeah, they don't match this way or that way. Yeah. I think of the wedge. I think well, maybe disjunctive syllogism. But I don't have a tilde a. I can't do modus ponens or modus tollens because so they don't have anything there. So initially, it looks kind of complicated. And this thing in the bottom, yuck! I don't even want to look at that yet. Yeah. But if I think about it now, I do see a pattern. These two things here match up with these two. So now I'm thinking constructive dilemma. And if I do constructive dilemma, if both these lines are true, one and two, and I know that either A or B is true, then it looks like either E or O will be true. So I can get E wedge O. So you can get a constructive dilemma. And it looks like it will be helpful because I'm seeing that there. So let's do a constructive dilemma. Good. So constructive dilemma says if you have P horseshoe Q and R horseshoe S, so P horseshoe Q, R horseshoe S, and then it says if you have the P part, wedge to the R part, it says you may infer the Q part wedge the O part, or the Q part wedge the S part. So let's do that. Mark suggests constructive dilemma. We'll get E wedge O, and we'll write CD telling the, our reader that we, that we use the constructive dilemma rule, and we used it on what lines? One, two, and three. One, two, and three. And notice the other rules, you appeal to one or two rule lines, but here you're appealing to three. That's right. This is the only rule we have of these eight inference rules that appeals, that requires that you appeal to three lines to justify it. That's right. And you start out with the process of elimination, don't you? You kind of look for modus ponens, you don't see it. You look for disjunctive syllogism, you don't see it. So then you start looking at other rules. Well, there are easier rules for me. Yeah. I just kind of naturally look to the rules that are easier to me. Other people, yeah. other rules might be simpler. Uh -huh. But uh, you just keep looking around, a pattern will emerge. Right. But you eliminate things until, and then you keep looking, and finally you say, hey, that's a CD pattern. That's one way. Okay, so you got E wedge O. Yeah. Which matches up with this. This is a really clear pattern. So I see that this is the same as that. So I have a modus ponens I can do with four and five. Right, so here's the modus ponens pattern. He sees that this matches this. So, so really we have P, P, horseshoe, Q. P, P, horseshoe, Q. And so modus ponens says to bring down N ampersand H. The Q part. The Q part. So from P and P horseshoe Q, we bring down the Q part. So I'm going to bring down N ampersand H. The rule was modus ponens that we used, and we applied it to lines four and five. Four and five. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, at, at this point, I'm seeing I'm getting kind of closer to the conclusion. I see an H here and an H here. So what I, since this is a, a conjunction, I know a simplification will allow me to pull out either side. I want to get that H all by itself so I can kind of work with it to get closer to the conclusion. Right. So I would use simplification. Right. In other words, you know that you're going to need the H to get that conclusion. And you can pull the H right out by simp, you know that. So we'll, do, we'll apply simplification. And uh, bring down the H from six. the right conjunct of the conjunction in 6. We bring the H down by simplification. Mm -hmm. So now we have the H. And we're looking at our conclusion. And we're thinking, how am I going to get there? Since it's a wedge. There's really only one, well, there's more than one, but there's one common way of gaining a disjunction to conclusions through addition. You get part of what you're looking for, then you add the other part. I've got the H, I've got the P, and I can add anything I want. And even though I see an E up here, I can add a tilde E. So let's just go ahead and add tilde E. This is what I'm looking for. So I would do an addition to line okay. seven. Okay. So we're going to do addition on line seven. We're going we're gonna to repeat line seven. Let this be P. So we're going to write down P, and then we're going to put a wedge to the right. And then we add here anything we want. Whatever we want. But we, we would like to add the not E. Now, we have an E here. Can we no, still add a not I E? I add anything I want. Anything. Yeah. So it really can be I, anything. I, want, I yearn for a tilde E. So we're going to add tilde E. 
So here's the um, addition pattern. P, in for P wedge, anything you wish. And so we used addition on line 7. So addition only cites one line, doesn't it? Whereas CD cites three lines. And we reached the formula at the bottom that's the same as the conclusion, so we've proven valid argument. It's a valid argument. And it won't hurt to emphasize something here. When you're doing proofs, remember it is not required in a proof that you use every rule. You don't have to use every rule. It's not required that you use every premise. Sometimes a proof might have a superfluous premise that never gets used. It's not required that you use every line, not required that you use every rule. And let's also remember that for most proofs, there's more than one way to complete them. Most proofs can be done in many different ways. Some proofs can be done in dozens of different ways. So just as there are many, there are many ways to wash your car, and uh, many ways to paint a picture of a tree, there are oftentimes many, many different ways to construct a proof, <coughs> all of them equally valid. Actually, an infinite number of ways. Sometimes. Now, this one, there's probably only, this one's so short that I don't know if there's ver very many variations on it, but no, most no proofs. In not intelligent variations. Yeah. You could add, you could, you could add an A, mm -hmm. you could add a tilde A, mm -hmm. you could add a B, and a tilde B, all this would be totally useless. Yeah, you could do a bunch of superfluous moves, superfluous but stuff, yeah. this is about as short as it can be, and uh, it is complete. Yep. So, thank you for your time. Good luck.